Hi everybody, I'm back. It's been a while. It's been about five days since I've made a video. And we're in John chapter 18 today. Now the last one, we had finished up the Lord's high priestly prayer in uh, chapter 17. And that finished now in verse 1 of chapter 18. It starts out, when Jesus had spoken these words... The words that he spoke in the prayer in, in chapter 17. He went forth with his disciples over the brook Kedron, where was a garden, into the which he entered and his disciples. Now this garden, of course, was the Garden of Gethsemane. It doesn't name it here, but it does in the other books. And we know because the garden is still there. It's at the foot of the Mount of Olives. And Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place. For Jesus oft times resorted thither with his disciples. Okay. Now, if you remember back in, I think it was chapter 13, the Lord told Judas, go do what you have to do. And he left at that point. Uh, so the whole time that Jesus was giving that big, long narrative in uh in chapter 14, 15, and 16, Judas was not there, or during the prayer in chapter 17. But it says here that Judas then, having received a band of men and officers from the chief priests and Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Okay, so Judas shows up there now with these Pharisees and a bunch of people with torches and weapons and stuff. To arrest Jesus. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that should come upon him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus saith unto them, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. As soon then as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backward and fell to the ground. So there's no explanation given as to why this happened. Um, we can only assume that it was just maybe the power coming from him and saying, I am he. And it knocked him down. <laughs> And this is only recorded here. It doesn't talk about this in the other three Gospels. But they went backward and fell to the ground when he said, I am he. Then asked he them again, Whom seek ye? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way. Now, he was talking about his disciples there. So he was protecting them and saying, if it's me you're seeking, here I am. Don't mess with these people. Then in verse 9, it says that, that the saying might be fulfilled. Why he said this about, about his disciples. Uh, Let these go their way. It says that he said that that the saying might be fulfilled, which he spake of them which thou gavest me, have I lost none. And here he's not referring so much to an, any Old Testament scripture. It's referring to what he just said in the last chapter in his prayer. In chapter 17, verse 12, he says, While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name, and those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost. So, it's saying that that word might be fulfilled, which he spoke himself in the chapter right before this. That's kind of interesting. Usually, when it refers back to fulfilling something that was said, it's usually from the Old Testament. But yeah, that's what it says. And 
Then in verse 10, it says, Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it, and smote the high priest's servant, and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Okay, now this is the only gospel that identifies the disciple that did this. The story is told in all four of the gospels, but all of those just say that, uh, that one of those that were with him or one of his disciples did it. But in the gospel of John, it identifies it as being Peter that did it. Now, in the account that's in the Gospel of Luke, in chapter 22, verses 50 and 51, uh, it tells a little bit more. There it says, And one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. And Jesus answered and said, Suffer ye thus far. And he touched his ear and healed him. Now, that's something that's unique there to the Gospel of Luke. It talks about him healing Malchus's ear, which was cut off. Um, and now what he said there, suffer ye thus far, what that means is stop, enough of this. So he's basically talking to Peter, who was attacking them with the sword. But yeah, in the Gospel of John, it actually identifies the servant and names him. And his name was Malchus. Okay, verse 11. Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword into the sheath. The cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? Yeah. Yeah, that's what he's been saying this whole time to them, is that he had to fulfill the mission for which he was sent which was for this very purpose, to offer himself for the sins of mankind. Then the band and the captain and officers of the Jews took Jesus and bound him and led him away to Annas first, for he was father-in-law to Caiaphas, which was the high priest that same year. Now Caiaphas was he which gave counsel to the Jews that it was expedient that one man should die for the people. Remember that? Um, it was a few chapters back where, where he said, no, you, you guys don't understand. And he was prophesying in saying it, that one person should die for the sins of the people. It was a prophetic thing because that's what Jesus actually did. But he wasn't talking about it in that way, in his mind. He was talking about that it's better that uh, one person die than the whole nation perish, is what he was talking about. He didn't realize that he was prophesying at the time. Um, now, verse 15, it says, And Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did another disciple. That disciple was known unto the high priest, and went in with Jesus into the palace of the high priest. Now, when he, when he says this, another disciple that was known to the high priest, that's believed to be John. Because through this whole gospel, he speaks of himself in the third person like that. So, so John made himself known. He's the only disciple that, that followed Jesus through this whole thing and wasn't afraid. He wasn't afraid of being arrested or anything, obviously, because he was there and they didn't touch him. But it says that uh, he went in with Jesus into the palace of the high priest. Verse 16, but Peter stood at the door without. He was kind of lurking in the shadows. He was afraid. He was trying to save himself. Really is what it was. Then went out that other disciple. Now this is believed to be John talking about himself again here. Then went out that other disciple, which was known unto the high priest, and spake unto her that kept the door and brought in Peter. So 
he was speaking to the doorkeeper, which was a woman. It says her. And she's the person that brought Peter in. But it doesn't say what he spoke to her. You know, it says that other disciple, which was known unto the high priest, and spake unto her that kept the door and brought in Peter. So that's kind of left a mystery. We don't know what was talked about there. Verse 17. Then saith the damsel that kept the door unto Peter, Art not thou also one of this man's disciples? Questioning Peter. He said, I am not. Now notice that she said, also. Art thou, art thou not also one of his disciples? So that tells you right there that John was obviously upfront about it. Because John was there too. Uh, she, so she must have known that John was a disciple by the fact that she used the word also. Are you not also one of his disciples? See, in addition to John. So Peter was consumed with fear here. Um, John was not. John made himself known, obviously. And Peter was hiding. Verse 18. And the servants and officers stood there who had made a fire of coals, for it was cold. And they warmed themselves, and Peter stood with them and warmed himself. The high priest then asked Jesus of his disciples and of his doctrine. Jesus answered him, now he's talking to Caiaphas, the high priest here. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple where the Jews always resort, and in secret, have I said nothing? Why askest thou me? Ask them which heard me what I have said unto them. Behold, they know what I said. So he's basically just saying here, why are you asking me what I said? You know what I said. Everybody in, everybody in the city was talking about what Jesus said and, and the things that he was doing. So... I don't know what it was. They wanted him to uh, to say himself what he was saying. They wanted him to repeat what he said so that they could incriminate him there. I, I'm not sure. I assume that's what it was. And when he had thus spoken, when Jesus said this, one of the officers which stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Answerest thou the high priest so? So he's saying, how dare you talk to the high priest that way? <laughs> now remember, Jesus is the high priest. Now, uh, he's the creator. He's the living word. So, you know, this. Uh, these officers had no idea. They had no clue of who they were talking to, of course. Jesus answered him, if I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why smitest thou me? So there he's saying, you know, if, I, if I've said something wrong, bear witness of it. Tell me what it is that I said wrong. But if what I said was good, why, why are you hitting me? Because he didn't say anything wrong. Everything he said was good. Now Annas had sent him bound unto Caiaphas, the high priest. And Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. They said therefore unto him, Art not thou also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. And that's the second time that he denied him. Verse 26, One of the servants of the high priest being his kinsman, whose ear Peter cut off, so it was a relative of Malchus, saith, Did not I see thee in the garden with him? Peter then denied again, and immediately the cock crew. Now remember what Jesus had told him. 
In chapter 13, verse 38, Jesus answered him, Wilt thou lay down thy life for my sake? Because remember, Peter said, I'll lay down my life for you. And Jesus says, Wilt thou lay down thy life for my sake? Verily, verily, I say unto thee. That means for sure, this is what's going to happen. The cock shall not crow till thou hast denied me thrice. So when this happened, Peter was devastated. It doesn't talk about it here in this gospel, but in, in the other gospels, it talks about how he went away and, and wept bitterly because when the rooster crowed, then he remembered. He remembered the words that Jesus said that he would deny him three times before the cock crowed. Um, we're coming to a time in the world now where we're going to be tested. We're going to have to stand up for the Lord Jesus Christ and for what we believe. We're going to have to stand up for what's right. Uh, there's things going on now that I'm not able to speak freely about on this platform. But there's things going on now that we need to stand our ground. We need to stand our ground and be immovable in our faith. Um, see, I believe that I have healing and I have my well-being and I have my health because of the blood of Jesus because of what he has done for me. And, and I believe in those blessings. Now, he holds my life in the palm of his hand. Of course, just like he holds all of our lives in the palm of his hand. <sighs> There's great evil in the world right now. Horrible, horrible, horrible evil. The things that are happening that the so-called authorities and, and people like that are doing now are just they're reprehensible. They're reprehensible. They're, they're terrible, evil, wicked schemes. Now, either we stand against these and stand on the word of God or we cave in. Are we going to cave in like Peter did? It's very similar because that's what he did. He said, no way will I deny you. You know, I'll die for you. I'll lay down my life for you. But then when it came right down to the nitty gritty, when he had to stand for the Lord, he didn't. He caved in out of fear. We have to stand against the fear people. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, I'm going to move on here. Um, now, in verse 28, it says, Then led they Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment. And it was early. And they themselves went not into the judgment hall, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. So these were all Jews and Pharisees and stuff that were taking Jesus to the Hall of Judgment, the Roman Hall of Judgment. But because it was the Passover, or the Passover was approaching, they didn't want to defile themselves because they believed that if they went into, into somewhere, uh, well, here it would have been the Hall of Judgment, which was ruled by Rome. So they had some kind of belief that if they went in there, then they'd be ceremonially unclean and defiled or something like that. So they're careful not to go in there, these religious people. Verse 29, Pilate then went out to them, since they wouldn't go in there, and said, What accusation bring ye against this man? They answered and said unto him, If he were not a malefactor, we would not have delivered him up to thee. Then said Pilate unto them, 
Take ye him and judge him according to your own law. The Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. So here, they gave themselves away right here. They wanted to kill him. They admit it right here that they want him dead. They said, our law doesn't allow for us to put a man to death. So that's what they were driving at. They just didn't, they didn't want him just in trouble or in jail. They wanted him dead. Verse 32. That the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled is why that happened. Which he spake, signifying what death he should die. Now the word that is saying that he spoke that was being fulfilled here is what he said back in John chapter 12, verse 32, when he said, And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Remember, he was talking about how, how Moses lift up the serpent in the wilderness so that anyone who looked at that serpent that was on the rod, that they'd be healed from whatever they had. And he said, I'll be lifted up that same way. So in order for this to happen, he had to be tried and punished by Rome because their mode of execution was crucifixion, which is that, lifting him up from the earth on the tree and all that. That had to be done so that the scripture would be fulfilled. So it's saying here, the Jews said it's not lawful for us to put any man to death. They wanted Rome to do it so that that scripture would be fulfilled. Of course, they didn't know that. But that's what it was, it says here. Verse 33, Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again, and called Jesus and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself? Or did others tell it thee of me? In other words, they're saying, uh, are you saying this on your own? Or did somebody else tell you that I was the king of the Jews? Pilate answered, am I a Jew? Thine own nation and the chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Well, he couldn't figure it out. He couldn't figure out what, what crime that they were accusing him of. As far as Pilate was concerned, Jesus was innocent. And he didn't understand why they were going after him like this. Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. <laughs> That is so great. And it's so true. That's so true. That's what I've been talking about here lately in these videos, that his kingdom is not of this world at all. There's a division between the natural and the spiritual. The things that he said were all spirit and truth. And they were, they were life. The things, the things that he said were, were things of another realm that the natural man can't really understand. So yeah, his kingdom is a spiritual kingdom. And one day it will be a physical kingdom also. But at this point, it, it is not. It is not. His kingdom doesn't, uh, doesn't fit in this dimension. Verse 37, Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. <laughs> Everyone that is of the truth Hearest my voice. <sighs> yeah. 
So what we're seeing here is the spirit of truth in contrast to the father of lies. <laughs> and and they're, they're opposing. They don't sink together at all. Lies rule this world that we live in. This whole world is, is totally ruled by lies. And it gets more that way all the time. All the time. <laughs> if we turn on our television and, and turn on the regular mainstream news to see what's going on, most of that, most of that is deception, uh, things that are being said to uh, get, the, get us to think a certain way. It's definitely not truth. Uh, there's a lot of lies there. There's a lot of, a lot of half-truths. A lot of things that they uh, that they try to inflate to get you to look at that, so you don't see something else that's going on. Um, the lies are just getting worse and worse and worse and worse all the time. Um, now, according to this, they were bad then. They were bad then, but they're not nearly as bad as they are now. Uh, the Bible says uh, evil men and seducers will wax worse and worse, I think is what the scripture says. I don't have it right here with me. Evil men and imposters or seducers, something like that, will wax worse and worse. And it really does. It does. It has gotten worse and worse and worse. So this is where I wonder. There's... There's different things being said now, like I mentioned before. There's one group in the Christian community that that says that we're heading into this great time, this great time of prosperity and uh, and uh, success and things like that. But then there's the other group that says just the opposite altogether. So, which one will you believe? But yes, here you see the big contrast of the spirit of truth, which he was speaking, in contrast to the lies of the world. Now he said, everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. And then in verse 38, it says that Pilate saith unto him, what is truth? <laughs> well, we know what it is. Jesus is the truth. The word is is the truth. But the world can't see this. Then it says, And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews, and saith unto them, I find in him no fault at all. And then he said in verse 39, But ye have a custom that I should release unto you one at the Passover. Will ye therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? <laughs> Then cried they all again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Now that's what it says here in the Gospel of John. That's the end of the chapter right there. Um, now in, in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 23, verses 18 and 19, it says, And they cried out all at once, saying, Away with this man, and release unto us Barabbas. Then it adds, Who, for a certain sedition made in the city, and for murder, was cast into prison. So he took part in, in this sedition against the Roman government, and, and he murdered somebody. So he was more than a robber. John says he was a robber, but then in the other Gospels, it tells us that he was a murderer. Um, and that's another thing that, that hasn't changed. The world will still, still to this day, choose an ungodly thug over a righteous, truthful person. We see it happen all the time in in. In popular media, people go after these people that are that are just uh, obnoxious 
unrighteous criminals, liars and thugs. And the world tends to like that better than a righteous person. This world glorifies the wicked, don't they? And it was the same way back then. It was the same way. So his mission, his mission wasn't difficult to complete, really, because the world was automatically against righteousness. So it was more of him allowing this to happen, really. That's where the difficulty in it was. To be, was for him being human to allow this to happen. But he knew what he came to do. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this word today. I, th I thank you for encouraging us and enlightening us with your word. And I ask that uh, all of my friends would be blessed and encouraged by this. Lord, I just give you all the glory in all things. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, this was a little bit different today, huh? I'm in my living room right here in front of my patio door. I'm having a little bit of trouble with the lighting, but I think it's going to turn out okay. Now, this winter, when we get a lot of snow, it'll, it's going to look a lot different out there. But I love you all, and I'll see you the next time around. Bye-bye. Some through the flood, some through